Hello friends, welcome back to the new tutorial of the GraphQL Apollo server. Today we are going to learn about GraphQL input types for the complex mutation. Those who haven't subscribed my channel yet, please do subscribe my channel. And if you like the video, please do like, share and comment on my video. Let's get started. In GraphQL, input types are used to handle the complex inputs for the mutations when you need to pass a structured, complex set of data such as multiple fields or the nested objects into mutation. An input type is the best way to define the structure of the input parameters. Why we use input types? Clean and organize, reusability and the flexibility. Defining an input type. An input type is similar to the regular GraphQL type, but it is used for the inputs. In the schema, you define an input type instead of type. How? Let's have a look. So here, define an input type for the book. So here, this is input type for the book that is title, author and the published year. Okay. Then you have to define the mutation, the type mutation, add book, input, book input. Okay. Then define the output of the book, type, title, author and the published year. After that, we have to write the resolver. In the resolver, you have to receive the input object as an argument. Okay, so input object as the argument and use it add a new book. Okay, so we are going to use it as a new book. Right. And this is for the queries to return that books. Okay. So let's take an example. Okay. And let's see how it will work. Okay. So first of all, this is you can see that we have a type def, type definition, output type mutation and the query. So let's add this and this is our resolver. Okay, so use this, open the code, hide this and let's comment that section and use this one. So we don't require this now. I think what else on the top, the box. So let's comment this. Rest of the things are the same. Mutation we have to update. And let's add our new mutation and everything and uh, set up the Apollo server and that's it okay done now we have to go with the add mutations let's save this and run node index.js it's ready so let's open the link so here we have the books let's copy this mutation first add a new book okay so here we have to go with the input right so here you can see the input title author published here like this you have to go with okay so let's add this in the variable section and add a new book so it is added right so i'm going to make it a second one also add it it return the second one okay done now fetch this books also so we have to use the query to fetch all these books okay so let's add this query okay we don't require the variables for that and let's run expected json let's delete this queries we require and the books query we want to add okay and which you want to return let's suppose you want to return the title okay let's query this and unexpected object let's see in the terminal no nothing here or something what happened let me check Query books. Mm -hmm. Let's see how to query fetch. Let me go to that one. So it's type query books. I think we require the input for this. No, no, no. Because you are fetching the data. We don't require the input. Let me understand what exactly the error is. Unexpected variable JSON to be an 
checked okay might be uh, we have to I think we have go with the input so in the query fetch all the books let's have a look of the code I think this is that thing you should return. Let's add one more time. I think there is query something because there is a spaces, I suppose. That's the reason issue. Okay, so it will return all the books that we have added. Correct. So this is the how we can use the inputs. Now, what is the benefits of using the input types in the complex meditations? Structured input, input type allow you to pass a well-defined structured input object to mutations, making our API easier to use. Complex data for complex data structures for the multiple nested objects, input types provide a clarity or the manageability. Validations, you can add the fields and the validation directly into the schema by specifying the required fields using exclamation. This approach makes your GraphQL API more organized, easier to maintain, and scalable for handling the more complex operations. In the next video, we are going to learn error handling and the validations in the GraphQL. Thank you so much for watching this video, and don't forget to like, share, and comment on my video. Have a nice day.